When I think of the hometown of my youth, all that I seem to remember is dust. The brown, crumbly dust of late summer arid. Sterile dust that gets into the eyes and makes them water. Gets into the throat and between the toes of bare brown feet. I don't know why I should only remember the dust, but memory is an abstract painting. It does not present things as they are, but rather as they feel. And one other thing I remember, a brilliant splash of sunny yellow against the dust. Miss Lottie's Marigolds. Whenever the memory of those marigolds flashes across my mind, a strange nostalgia comes with it and remains long after the picture has faded. We children, of course, were only vaguely aware of the extent of our poverty. I remember squatting in the road drawing a picture in the dust, a picture which Joey gleefully erased with one sweep of his dirty foot. I remember fishing for minnows in a muddy creek and watching sadly as they eluded my cupped hands while Joey laughed uproariously. For the most part, those days are ill-defined in my memory. Locust, you got them all while they were still green. I tell you what, let's go to Miss Lottie's. The idea caught on at once, for annoying Miss Lottie was always fun. And I was still child enough to scamper along with the group. Over rickety fences. Across the dirt. and through bushes that tore our already raggedy clothes back to where Miss Lottie lived. Look at her. Yeah. She's going with them crazy flowers. Yeah, look at her. We children hated those marigolds. They interfered with the perfect ugliness of the place. They were too beautiful. They said too much that we could not understand. Y'all get some stones. Come on, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you scared? Everybody get some stumps and I'll show you how it's done. The pebbles were collected quickly and everyone looked at me to begin the fun. Come on, y'all. Who there? You better get. Gone! Gone home! Gone! John Burke! John Burke, come help! A lady witch who fell in a ditch Pick a penny and thought she was rich An afternoon well spent in our book Twenty-two years, Maybell. Twenty-two years and I got nothing for you Nothing, nothing, nothing It's alright, honey Everybody's out of work now. You know that. It ain't right. No man ought to eat his woman's food year in and year out and watch his children run around wild. Ain't nothing right about that. Nothing. Honey, you took good care of us when you had it. And ain't nobody got nothing nowadays. I ain't talking about anybody else. I'm talking about me. God knows I try. What must a man do? What must a man do? Tell me that. Look. We ain't starving. I get paid every week, and Miss Ellis is real nice about giving me things. She gonna let me have Mr. Ellis' coat this year for the winter. Darn Mr. Ellis' coat and darn their money. You think I want white people leadings? Darn, Maybell. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I had never heard a man cry before. I did not know men ever cried. I could not cut off the sound of my father's harsh, painful, despairing sobs. How could it be that my father was crying? The world had lost its boundary lines. My mother, who was small and soft, was now the strength of the family. My father, who was the rock on which this family had been built, was sobbing like the tiniest child. 
Everything was suddenly out of tune, like a broken accordion. Where do I fit into this crazy picture? I do not now remember my thoughts, only a feeling of great bewilderment and fear. You lost your mind? I had indeed what? lost my mind. Elizabeth! Elizabeth, what are you doing? Stop! Elizabeth! 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 <laughs> Elizabeth, look. That was the moment when childhood faded and womanhood began. That violent, crazy act was the last act of childhood. I gazed upon a kind of reality, one that is hidden to childhood. The witch was no longer a witch, but only a broken old woman who dared to create beauty in the midst of ugliness. I know that that moment marked the end of innocence. In that humiliating moment, I looked beyond myself and into the depths of another person. This was the beginning of compassion, and one cannot have both compassion and innocence. Just kind of... <laughs>